Is that a Wahoo? No, it's a Marlin. It's a Marlin. It's turned broadside. He's about to shoot, shoot. He's got it. No. No! No! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel Mann. A few weeks ago, I did a video called when spearfishing goes wrong, and anybody that's been in the game for a while knows that spearfishing, it doesn't always go to plan. So I threw it out to you guys to send in your clips of when spearfishing hasn't gone to plan for you. So let's jump into when spearfishing goes wrong, subscriber edition. First cab off the rank, we have Mitchell McClellan from Western Australia, diving on some Mahi Mahi here, maybe off a fad somewhere. He's trying to look through the school. There's one that breaks off, so he's picked that out of the shoal, and bang. <laughs> oh, he's let go of his real gun. Oh, that's a horrible feeling when that happens, but you'll actually notice there, his reel wasn't done up super tight, so when the fish took off, it actually took some line off, which allowed him to get back to that gun, so that's super lucky. When you're using a real gun, you never want to have the brake cranked on super tight, because if you do shoot something, it's really easy for it to pull it out of your hand straight away, whereas if you've got a little bit of the drag backed off, it takes the line out just like that, get your aim right carbon fiber gun back and you have a better day. On the subject of forgetting things, Harvey Rogers here. I think this is the UK or possibly Northern France. Some sea bass coming in at him. He's probably waiting for this big one to turn broadside. Yes, and nah, safety on. That's happened to everybody throughout their diving career at some stage. If you have a gun with a safety, we've all been there. You use it lining up on a fish and the trigger doesn't go and the fish inevitably scares off. Another one here, Xander from Anguilla, diving on this nice shoal of Barracuda, picking one out. There he goes, and safety on again. He's actually managed to get it off underwater, but by this stage, when you jerk the gun at the fish, the fish normally spook, and he's had to go back to the surface. Not your day, Xander, but I hope you get back down there and get one of those Barracuda soon. You can't always tell when your equipment's going to fail, but if you start shooting big fish, I guarantee any weaknesses in your equipment will come to light very, very quickly. This clip here was submitted by Steve from Impact Zone Spearfishing. He has a channel that operates out of Northwest Australia. You can see on this clip here, he's diving down. It's a little hard to see, but there's actually a wall of yellowfin tuna and he's connected with one. It's taken off like a rocket because that's what tuna do, but that is a big problem there. His reel has presumably broken off its mount down near the handle and it's ripped towards the muzzle. He is so lucky that this thing is actually still spinning. Otherwise, that gun would have been ripped from his hands and he would have been very sad that he lost a tuna and a gun, but look at the rest of those jelly beans up there. That is a massive sashimi party. Lucky for Steve, he's managed to get back to the surface here and he's fighting the fish, gets down, goes for the tail grab, pushes the spear through all the way. He's got the fish heading back to the surface and you can see that gun there with the reel still just sitting at the muzzle. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that clip, Steve. It's an absolute ball terror. As you can imagine, I received a ton of submissions for missed fish. Now, I'm just giving you the heads up, going to warn you that you may feel some slight discomfort when you watch the next few clips. You may feel physically ill. Other symptoms include yelling at your screen. This clip here from Alex Henderson, massive shoal of kingfish. He hasn't left the surface and misses the first one there. You can understand that, a bit of buck fever, but this shoal of kingfish is hanging around and this often happens when you shoot a kingfish that the others will school around the other kingfish that's been speared and if you're diving with a buddy they can go down and shoot the other kingfish that are hanging around and get a two for one which is really cool but here there's some really big fish and they're hanging around his piece of burley there i think he said he was burleying for snapper at the time and they caught him off guard but he's managed to reload his gun here he hasn't got the shooting line sorted but come on alex dive down and he, you can see his gun waving and Oh, no, <laughs> a second miss. Oh, Alex, man, I feel for you so much. That is that is heartbreaking that you've missed a second time and presumably the kingfish swam off after that. I hope you get back out there and find that shoal of kingfish again soon. Another yellowtail kingfish video here from Jack Coglin lining up and, oh man. <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me how much you can yell underwater when you're really pissed off and just missed a fish like that. And on the surface for that matter as well. Next clip here is from Pablo Sanchez and I believe this is somewhere in Spain. I'm not sure if this is the Canaries or Mediterranean Spain or the west coast of Spain, but I do know that that is a Dentex off in the distance and he's got himself positioned really nicely on this rock here. It's a good spot to hide, but still be able to get your spear gun out to shoot. So he's crouching down, the Dentex is coming in. Pablo getting his Dentex and bang. What, what happened there? What, wait, what happened there? 
he, that was well within ah uh, see his his band has come off the end of his gun i can only think that maybe that got tangled in his shooting line or something and really would have slown the shot down thanks for submitting that one pablo i'm sure that still hurts to this day to watch that footage now we're heading over to new caledonia with rafael seracom sorry if that's not how you pronounce it french is not one of my proficiencies but wahoo under the surface and missing i can relate to that here we go that looks like a big massive roller gun that wahoo looks pretty close but it seemed like the spear just went straight under that fish it's so hard to tell when you're in super clean water and there's a massive fish with no reef to reference the size and that's an all too familiar story for me heading over to the portuguese island of madeira off the west coast of africa snf spear fishing here this looks like a really nice wahoo, but unfortunately, whenever you try and shoot them from the surface like this without duck diving, your gun waves around exactly like this, and it's a recipe for missing fish. And if you're ever in that position, a little duck dive under the surface makes all the difference in shooting a wahoo or a dolphin fish or anything that's just under the surface. This is not something I've ever encountered in the water before. This is a milkfish. They are world renowned as a sport fish. Alvin Page here, and he's picked the biggest one, but Maybe you shot straight over that, I'm not sure. This is Brett Whitman from the Spear Factor podcast lining up on a steephead parrotfish. I think maybe his rubbers threw him off there because they were loaded a bit funny. That can sometimes throw your aim off. If you haven't heard of Brett Whitman before, he actually runs the Spear Factor podcast. I've been a guest on the show before, so I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. Here, Vasco Cabral is tickling a lobster out of its hole here. He's just got the spear gun behind it and it's out of the hole, ready for the grabbing. And that lobster says, you know what? I don't really fancy having a hot bath anytime soon. Quick, chuck him in. Uh. Some Hawaiian three-prong action here from Brad Sturgis. And this fish here is really well camouflaged. Often when fish rely on their camouflage, they won't move until it's too late. But this guy had other ideas. He was, he was out of there. It's very easy to think that the bigger a fish is, the easier it is to shoot because the target's massive, but not always. When I first watched this, I thought it was a wahoo coming into the CD flasher, but it's obviously a big marlin here and he shoots, but just scared the marlin off. Unfortunately, too far away there and it jumped out of the water because it got such a fright, probably pooped itself, but it's all too common that when you're in blue water with no reference, you don't know how big fish are, so often it takes a few days to overcome blue water syndrome. When we do finally manage to connect with a fish, it is far from over. Generally speaking, larger fish are more difficult to land because they fight harder. This can lead to a little bit of complacency when it comes to smaller fish, and that's when things can go wrong. Thanos Stavru here is in beautiful Cyprus, and he's hunting mullets in the shallow. Shot a mullet, his camera sort of flopped off the mount there so you can't see it, but he's got the fish and he's on the surface. He's giving himself a thumbs up. He's thinking about the mullet capacho that he's about to have. And if you remember in the last video where the flopper closed and the yellowfin tuna got away, you can see here that the flopper actually closed just then and mullet gone. It doesn't matter if you're chasing a fish that's 500 grams or 50 kilograms. You have a responsibility to look after your kit and make sure your flopper is in good working order because ultimately that holds the fish to the spear. These next few clips I'm calling Lost and Found. You'll see why. We're back in Madeira and this time we're looking at a red mullet. Now they don't grow very big, they grow maybe a kilo and a half maximum, but they are an exceptional table fish. That's why people hunt them very often. This one's got off the spear and he is putting in a massive chase here all over these rocks. This area looks pretty cool, nice and shallow, and he's gonna corner this fish sooner or later. There it goes, it tries to swim into the hole, but no other entrance for that hole. He's got his hand on it, but probably because it's wedged into a crack, he can't quite get his hand around it and running out of air there. And also got spiked by that urchin, that looks painful. If you've ever got one of those in your foot when you're walking around a beach as a kid, you'll know the pain of trying to pull those out, they actually fracture as well. So when you try and get them out of the splinters, just very nasty thing to happen. But this red mullet, it's popped out of the hole. It's sitting right under the surface. It's giving himself enough time to breathe up and recover from that dive. It was probably a bit of a long dive there. It's very important. Anytime you dive, you always need to give yourself some surface recovery. Me personally, I try and do at least three times my bottom time. Now, going for the duck dive. Here we go, going for the catch and nailed it. That is some Adam Gilchrist stuff right there. 
Over to New Zealand, we have Mac Thompson, and this is the typical sort of video that I see of people snooping snapper around the kelp on a ledge, shooting down into the snapper. And you can see his snapper's gone off to the right there, but it's not on the end of his spear. He's frantically trying to reload, but maybe, wait, no, he's not reloading. He's given up on the reload. He goes for the few hook breaths, duck dive straight back down, looking for that fish and yeah, you can see there that the spear hasn't come out the other side. It's probably hit the spine and not penetrated the whole way, but it's broken the spine of the fish and it can't swim properly. So here we go for the catch and mate, well done, Mac. That is not an easy chase. That fish could have gone under that kelp into a cave and you would have never seen it again. So good job. Moving on to the United States of America with SB Spears here with one of their quintessential fish, the hogfish. He shot that and heading back to the surface. He's got it there with his buddy on the surface. Looks like they're just trying to bleed it out. So you slice a little bit under the throat there and it bleeds the fish out, makes the flesh taste so much better. And the shot was a little bit low, I think. That's why the fish fought so hard. And the fish still had some life in it and it's, it's off the spear. It's headed back down to the bottom. He's down there with his spear trying to catch this thing. It's gonna go into that cave for sure. Yep, straight into there. I don't know how deep that cave is, but actually the fish hasn't gone too far and you can see it a little bit there. He's got his spear, he's not gonna use his spear. He's just gonna reach in and grab it straight by the tail. Nailed it, got it back. That could have ended way worse than it did. Full marks for that chase. And look at these beautiful fish. The patterns on them are pretty astonishing actually. We're now back in the Portuguese islands off the west coast of Africa, this time the Azores, and we have Lorenz here. He's just shot what appears to be a bonito or some little type of tuna, but he looks like he's spined it actually, and the fish is just sort of giving that typical tuna vibration that happens when you shoot them there. Where I'm from in Australia, if you did that, you're gonna have three bull sharks and a bronze whaler harassing you pretty damn quickly. It's going for the grab and holds the spear and the, f the fish slides off, obviously, a longer shot and the spear hasn't gone the whole way through, the flopper hasn't engaged on the other side. That often happens when you're shooting fish that have thick set spines. A lot of pelagic fish have a really big spine on them, so if you hit them you may injure the fish a lot, but it's you need a lot of punch to get through the other side. And he's doing a great job here of keeping his eye on the fish, making sure that he doesn't let it go into any caves, or if he does let it go into a cave, he knows which one it is. You can see it there sort of flailing in circles on the bottom and it's Oh, it's, it's pretty done. He's going down for it and, oh, it slipped into that crack there. Oh, that's a really, I don't know if you'll be able to reach into that. You can just see its head there. He's going in. I think he's gone for the pig reach of the arm into there and he's headed back to the surface. I think he's probably got this. We'll wait to see. Back to the surface and. Oh, that was close, man. What? I almost lost him. Great job, Lorenz. That's a that's a heroic effort, that one. We're back again with Steve in Northwest Australia, and you can see this kingfish that he's about to shoot. I think it's a kingfish, yep. Shoots it, uh, he's put it onto the string. So when you have a powerful gun and you shoot straight through a fish and you put it onto the monofilament or the dynema, it's not ideal because that can cut through the fish a lot easier than your flopper pulling on the skin, especially around kelpie areas like this. So Steve's called for a second gun. He knows this isn't a good shot. And it looks like the kingfish is wrapping itself up on the bottom. He's just got one rubber loaded and you can see it there. I, I think it's off. Yeah, it's it's gone under that little ledge there. So he's going to dive down with one rubber loaded on this gun and I can't see the kingfish, but where is it? Oh, it's popped its head out there. It's going another cave. You'll never see it again after that, but oh. Look at that shot! Has he stoned it? Did he just get that? Sniper Steve, back at it again. This last clip to me is probably one of the most ridiculous things that I've ever seen happen with a dog tooth tuna. Nick Fletcher filming his mate Ollie in Papua New Guinea. He's diving on this dog tooth tuna. It's not too interested and then it turns and bang. Perfect shot, stones it, snaps the spine, the fish is just doing circles, easy to pull this back to the surface. But that little vibration can sometimes close a flopper and that's exactly what happens right there. The fish gets off the end of the spear but it's just doing circles and it's it, it can't swim back down to the depths because it's got a snap spine. But it's also not within reach. I mean, what do you do there? You can't reload that gun too easily because that's a big blue water gun. But I think Nick has alerted Ollie that his fish is, it's pretty close to the surface because it's its kind of just 
swimming its way back to the surface. You could probably go over and grab that. I think Nick's told Ollie. Ollie's put in the big overhum swim. I love the dedication. Get what you killed. Go after it. And he puts the dive in, but the fish has other ideas. It's going down. It says, I don't like you. You shot me. Uh, but he can't control his body and grabs a dog tooth tuna by the tail and swims it to the surface. Those things are so powerful. A fish that size would drag a 10 litre float underwater. That's absolutely insane madness to me that that's happened. Thank you so much to everybody that submitted clips for this video. I'm sorry I couldn't include them all. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you on the next one.